बेटा क्या कर रहे हो क्या पढ़ाई कर रहे हो एन आई से सर अंकल मैं आईआईटी में पढ़ रहा हूँ एन देवल से ओ आईटीआई बेटा आईटीआई में क्यों गया आप मेरे पास आ जाते आईटीआई में तो आप मैकेनिक क्या बनोगे मैं उस प्राइवेट कॉलेज वाले प्रमोटर को जानता हूँ मैं आपका वहाँ एडमिशन कराया था एन आई लाइक ओ वाओ Hi, I'm Devendra Agrawal. I'm founder of Dexter Capital. I'm co-founder of Insta Office. Welcome to Backstage with Millennials. The story is about how I uh, born, brought up in small village, uh, studied in government school, and how I became an entrepreneur. So I'm born, brought up in a small village. Uh, uh, village name is Hasampur. Generally, the way way sort of things worked out in villages. uh you will sort of go school st- complete your studies you will do your bama whatever and my father used to run a cloth shop which was ancestral shop which has been running from few generation and you are expected to come back and sort of let's say help your father and let's say do that right so i uh i started helping my father in the in the his cloth shop uh i would say when i was in my fourth class and my first i would say first aspect of the business first work of the business was to serve to get the tea either from home or a local tea vendor serve the tea pick the tea cups and clean them and keep them back so that the that the first thing i did and over time let's say i gradually learned other things which is showing what kind of clothes people want to buy remembering the colors what to show what not to show in what order to show in fact i remember very very clearly so i used to study in government school Uh, uh so indian government runs lot of let's say uh lot of government schools uh so i used to study in one of them uh, in fact that was the only school in the my village and what used to happen is whenever there would be lot of customers in my uh, in my shop my fa- and people say ki can you can you give it first first to us my father will tell ki look i am the one guy uh, this this is what i can do if you need faster can you go to school and can you get my son and the customer will actually walk into running class and he'll say uh, hey can you send this guy to school his father needs and i'll like oh i'm such an important person uh, i would say a lot of things which come which i use today uh, you can call them negotiation focus on cost whom to do business with whom not to do business with uh, all those i would say i learned with my father uh, from class 4 to class 12 uh and overall i i would say it was a sort of let's say uh, great experience working with my father in fact i would say i became so good at it when i got uh, uh good marks in my 10th class i actually debated with my father and the debate was more out of comparison i say because the person who was uh, second to me who studied in a different school he was going to a good school in jaipur st javier school uh, st javier sir maheshri so i actually debated with my father ki look the person other person who is poorer than us uh, who's got lesser marks than me if they can send their kid to jaipur why can't you and my father said look uh, i still have to take care of your uncles i have to take care of your two brothers if you also go our expenses will increase and our earning will come down right it actually could become issue i never taken let's say debt in my life i don't want to do that so i believe in you even if you go to your nearby school which is which was in kotputli which was a town 20 km away from village you'll still do well and you'll continue to lend helping hand to me so i joined a school in kotputli and and that school i would say uh, worth sort of a school sort of town where to just one way travel i would take i would take nearly 2 hour of my time one way travel because uh, the connectivity way back in 97 to 99 uh, from school from let's say my village to town was not really good the first bus which will come with will close to at 7 am i'll get up at 5 am i'll go i'll go i'll go sir ki some vehicle will come and i'll go in that but it would rarely happen so i would actually reach my school one hour after the school had started but overall i would say uh, given two hour daily i was spending so i what i used to do even when i was waiting for my uh, when i was waiting for bus i used to study even at my bus stand I used to study even when I was going for school. So I was let's say in roadways bus, everybody's around, and I'll just pull out my book and I'll study. So that's something I used to do to ensure that I can 
manage my time efficiently. Uh, in my 12th class, I again, once again got good marks, despite my father wanted me to be at, at sharp for two of my critical exams. So I got like 87.38%. If I again, once again, go for coaching, I wanted to go for coaching to prepare for PET. So the question once again, if I go, really it's like this money, spending so much money for coaching is worth it. And he, one thought is ki my elder brother was becoming doctor, younger to him was becoming engineering. And he said, ki, look, then who will take care of the shop, right? At least I need one son to take care of the shop. Shop is doing so well, right? Or somebody should be with us uh, when, we, when we got old, right? Uh, but then my brother, uh, elder brother, Dr. Manoj Gupta, he really stood and he said, ki, no, he should go. And then I sort of went for quota for prepare my uh, coaching. And I would say when I reached to quota, I only came to prepare PET. As soon as I reached in town, I actually knew that, okay, there's something something called IIT. And that's where I appeared for, uh, let's say, tests for Bansal classes, career point, etc. So I would say exposure matters a lot in terms of what you really want to aspire. Uh, guidance also matter a lot because had my brother not stood for me, I don't think I would have been able to go to Kota. Had I not gone to Kota, had I gone to a local, uh, local, let's say, coaching, I would never known that there is IIT compared to PET, right? I would never be able to prepare for IIT, right? If you compare with the current startup, these are like things you need to have mentors, right? Because you may not be able to see beyond a point. And you need somebody else who can see beyond a point and who can advise you, who can advise you correctly, seeing your potential. Because you may, you may not know your potential yourself. And thankfully, I got into uh, IIT Bombay. I remember a walk I had with my brother. Uh, I was very happy that I got into IIT, right? I like uh, on the top of the world. He said, look, you not achieved anything. The journey has just started. There's a lot to achieve. And a person who comes from a village, people like us actually have to struggle even harder because you've never seen bullying. You've never seen people being made fun of, right? This will start happening because now you're competing with best of the best in your college. So I know, I know in you, I, I, I have a lot of faith in you, I have a lot of belief in you. So you should ensure that you are able to, you are able to overcome your weaknesses and do better. Those things stayed with me, I would say for entire four years. Uh, I'll tell you when I went into IIT Bombay, I really did not have good English. I saw a notice on the notice board that people who have weaker background can take merit come means scholarship, right? So I went to the dean's office directly in my second day of IIT. The dean was from South India. He did not know anything about Hindi. I did not know anything about English. So I took the notice board poster and said, look, I want this. Tell me how to do that. He sent me to academic office. He said what documents needed. So I realized, look, without knowing English, I cannot really survive. I would say next two years, I took a lot of effort. I, I would have spoken in front of a mirror. I would have, uh, one of the book I read, one of the first book I read was uh, Autobiography of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. I would have, like that book, every line would have four circles because those spelling I would not know. After one year, two year, I became a little better. I will still make a lot of mistakes. Like in class, I'll say, uh, sir, this 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. So rather than is equal to, I'll use barabar, which in Hindi is equal to. Uh, when I was in village, I don't, even my father, nobody really knew. But they used to feel that engineers, doctors, they come from a different world. They never believe that somebody can come from them, right? And there are a lot of, there are very lot of educated people I used to meet when I went to IIT. When I used to go back to my village uh, during my summer holidays, and they're like, okay, beta, kya kar rahe ho? Uh, kya kar rahe ho? And I'll say, uh, Sir, uncle, I'm IIT. Mein pad raho. And they will say, Oh, ITI. What is ITI? 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 What why the hell I did not, uh, why the hell I did not go to a private college? One of my uh, village kid, he got really, really good marks in his 12th class. His father, given everybody knew that I got into IIT, right? His father came to my father, they got my number, mm -hmm. they consulted with me. The thing is, they, they also got into NDA. And NDA is something which was considered prestigious because 80% people, 80% of students after 12 would not get jobs, right? So getting an NDA means secure career, government job, getting to army, which is a prestigious thing. 
I try to explain them, look, IIT is a very different, go, let him go for coaching, he may or may not select, but that, that is worth, that's worth a sharp. And they honestly, despite my pleading, trying to explain, etc., they did not consider because IIT was uncertain thing, NDA was secure. Going for IIT meant extra capital, extra expense, after going uncertainty, and NDA was like secure thing, right? So, the thing is, ki without exposure, even, even when you are getting the advice, you may not sort of believe it, right? So, you really need to know what you should go, what you should not go, and the kid has no say. It was his father was deciding. The kid was like, you, whatever Papa tells me, I'll do it, right? So, I will feel that I, I really don't know what the kid is doing today. But uh, but the thing is, ki it was pretty hard for me to swallow a, a candidate. I feel that guy can go into IIT, like somebody like me, did not opt for it, did not even apply for it, did not even make an effort for it, right? So, I would say sometimes you really don't know. It's better that you have mentors or taken the advice and then put an effort to go, go for it. During during my second year, third year, I would say there are late, there are a lot of there's a great turmoil in my mind. What really, I, what I really want to do? I was a good student, so probably I want to, I wanted to go for uh, let's say higher studies because good student typically will go to MIT, Stanford to do for MS and PhD. And it was a financially also sound option because they used to offer a lot of scholarship to IIT students. At one hand, I will have this thought. Then second, I thought, ki, should I go to industry, work in like tech companies? Third year. I really don't like these two things. I still have the calling of business which I learned from my father, right? How do I do that? One of person who was my senior from IIT, Praful Krishna, he was uh, like he was two years senior to me. He went to McKinsey. I consulted with him and I said, I took a course in uh, fourth year. The course was in economics and that course I really loved. Other courses also good. I would, I would study and I would do well. But that course was something I really liked. And I went to, uh, I got, I did my summer internship at Text Instrument, which is considered one of the very, very good firm. I got PPO from them. So I was placement wise secure. So I asked Praful, ki, Praful, I really don't want to go to uh, Text Instrument. I think I should do something in finance. And should I drop out? Should I join a job? And there was no finance job in 2005. Now IIT is higher, finance firm higher, uh, in hoards in finance firm. But at that time, not a single finance firm will come to IIT and let's say hire this thing. So he said, kid, look kid, you are just probably got enamored by something. You should really determine what your interest, right? It shouldn't be, it should be, is it your passion? Or is it something you are like, you have, you're fancy about, right? So why don't you go to IIT? IIT is, uh, why don't you go to Texas Instrument? Texas Instrument is great, great this thing. You are very good, like you are, you are getting very good marks uh, in your IIT, right? And you got PPO, right? Getting, getting interns in a text instrument, getting PPO is not, not easy. He was also from my same department, electrical. So he knew about it, right? So you should really demand ki, would you go to technical and really enjoy that? Then go ahead and make a career. That's a great career. If you know your passion should automatically bring to your path, right? If you are really passionate, nobody will stop you. So go ahead and do that. And one thing I realized that either you don't make mentor, if you make mentor, really trust them. So I trusted Praful and, and sort of, let's say I went to Text Instrument. I really, really enjoyed my work, but my kick for finance continued and I continued to pursue. So I remember in my very incoherent English, I gave a like 56, present, 56 pages presentation. Uh, Texas used to have Friday at five. So I gave that and everybody really loved it for its content, not for delivery. And I became de facto consultant for a number of my seniors. And I used to know their financials, know their salaries, etc. And I really, really sort of loved it. Uh, so I knew the difference in finance. And I even applied for multiple firms because it was a really struggle time. I, I would apply to any firm. So finally, I, I got through Clear Capital. And I would say Clear Capital, interviewing with Clear Capital was an experience because Clear Capital was founded by Nick Paulson Alice, who is now a sort of literally like a mentor to me. Uh, thankfully, they did not select me for the job I applied, which is technology analyst. But Sora Mukherjee, who was the head of finance, financial services, uh, he used to head financial services sector. He he interviewed me and he really liked me. He also had an opening and he hired me. And I would say that was transformation of my career because they were really passionate about that. I would study pretty hard. I would work very hard. And in one and a half year of that career, I learned a lot. One of my friends introduced me to a firm called Olympus Capital. I interviewed them. I don't think I was fairly, fairly let's say, keen to leave Clear Capital because I really loved to move, really loved the work. And Olympus actually hired me. Olympus is a property firm. Uh, they manage around two billion dollar capital. Uh, I again consulted Praful. 
ki look i really love my work in this thing but practically firm really hired me and he said ki look you don't need to think getting a practically job is very hard you should sort of go don't think things will settle down you don't need to be emotional about it so i actually went to olympus and joined them olympus i would say was a pretty great sort of thing uh but one thing was still not clear to me uh, even when olympus that what i really want to do because i loved investment i was doing that i was doing pretty well uh but investment was not doing business it was not entrepreneurship because i was not in charge of decision so when i went to gurgaon uh, i realized that there are two challenges one people don't really have transport and people don't really have food uh in building 8c actually when we go used to go down subway used to have line of 50 people so i with my cousin started a business home test home test food solution private limited i just financed that and used to let's work a little part time i used to get up at 5 in the morning we'll go to mandi buy vegetables ensure that we come back prepare the food leave for olympus reach there 9 am whenever i come back i'll directly go to the kitchen we started at defense we reached to 400 defense demand for our food was pretty great so our client said to us that hey guys don't supply defense can you set up a kitchen within our premises and we told the, we told this ki look we can do that but we cannot really afford the cost so we got cutlery free we got space free we got even person free from them we only supply food and it was a very highly profitable business right we just put i would i would remember like i put like 9 9 or 10 lakh rupee capital and we are actually earning that much of profit like literally every month but the thing is ki it became really drudgery for my co-founder and one half year later he suddenly come came one day ki look he doesn't want to do it any more any want to join a financial firm so we decided to sell it to business but i realized that thing doing this thing really requires a different sort of let's say skill set and i used to know i used to see him ki look how he used to fight how he used to negotiate and i knew that if i were to do him i don't have the patience because i used to work in practically firm where things really happen really fast right people really professional who are you're dealing with so i realized that i need to have an operational experience that's when i got an opportunity of one of my teachers who really changed my life came came to me and said ki can you become cfo of my firm the firm was resonance so i went to resonance i i worked with them for two years i told sir ki look i'm coming to work for you but i really want to become an entrepreneur and i would not be career cfo so to you i worked with their really help sort of firm grew from let's say a level let's say a to b uh, and two year later i started extra capital Dexter Capital journey is interesting because I started I learned to now take decisions which I believed in. So I started Dexter Capital as an investment bank in Jaipur. Nobody really start that. I focused on tier 2 tier 3 market. Again people really don't focus on that. Uh, so I did that and I would say first two year was decent but I realized the pain of doing entrepreneurship in India, pain of dealing with B2B, right? I really did not get paid. So I knew that it's hard and that was time where I would say had I decided look entrepreneurship is a shot for me i would have packed my bag and i would have gotten back in the job right but i, I uh, when i became an entrepreneur i told my wife that i am becoming an entrepreneur for life so i said let me work in that way uh, where i should work that way and i am really thankful one of the first client saurabh sharma and neha mantri who were my first client for indus insight i i i worked pretty well for them and i got a lot of references from them that became my initial client base today i would say dexter is now 6 year old we have done like 25 transaction we are pretty decently well known name we get like 100 plus clients we take work on 8 to 10 clients so overall it became pretty i would say decently successful one more thing that happened is that uh, my one of my friend vikas lakhani he was running a business i was sort of informally advising him then he said ki look i really want to scale it and that's where i shifted my bags from jaipur shifted to delhi and became his co-founder and started insta office today insta office is at like 15 places in all our country but each of the place we have not done any capex we are not paid any deposit we are at revenue share which is very very hard all doing one thing is easy but doing all three is pretty hard so that's something we built we raised some capital as well and at insta office as of today we are profitable we are corporate level ebitda level profitable today uh, i am invited for speaking etc but i would say it was really hard work and sort of let's say grit which sort of brought me to this place So if you are looking for my contact details you can look at description of this video uh, where you will find my contact details thanks for watching the video have a great day